So this is the 2015 chemical equilibrium question. It's a half question this year. Um, so it starts off with looking at calculating some equilibrium concentrations using the equilibrium constant, Kc. And then there are some questions about looking at how Le Chatelier affects the equilibrium and the position of the equilibrium. So let's start off with the concentration calculations. So there are generally two types of questions that can be asked. You can be given the equilibrium concentration. Sorry, you can you can be given the equilibrium constant. So here we're told is four. That means you probably won't know what the equilibrium concentrations are and you have to work them out. Or you can be told those equilibrium concentrations and hence work out the equilibrium constant. So this is the first way, it's a little bit harder. We have to we have to um, work in reverse. So we're told that the concentration <coughs> of A is 30 moles and 10 litres. So that means its concentration in moles per litre is 30 divided by 10, which is 3 molar or 3 moles per litre. We can assume that before the reaction starts, the concentration of B and the concentration of C, both products, are zero. We don't know what the equilibrium concentrations of B and C are, so we're going to call them X. They're both equal because it's the 1 is to 1 molar ratio. That means then, in thinking about the change of reaction between starting off and reaching equilibrium, B and C have both increased by an amount X to go from zero to X, and A has decreased by an amount X because it's the 1 is to 1 molar ratio, so A has gone to 3 minus X. So now we have some way of expressing the equilibrium concentrations, we can use our equilibrium constant expression. So we can sub in these values for concentration of B, concentration of C, and concentration of A, using X by X divided by 3 minus X, and we're told in the question that this is equal to 4. So that means we can rearrange this expression to give us a quadratic expression, x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0. Once we know this quadratic expression, we can solve for x. Now, of course, we can use the minus b formula. Here, you might just spot that you, this is easily factorizable. So we get a value either through factorizing or through minus b formula of x is equal to minus 6 or x is equal to plus 2. x is a concentration that cannot be negative, so we must take the positive value. So we take x to be 0.2 molar, which is 0.2 moles per litre. So going back to our ICU table, the question is asking us, what is the total number of gas moles at equilibrium? Well, now we can just add up our concentration. So we know we have 2 moles of C, x, 2 moles of B, x, so that's 4, plus 3 minus 2 of A, so 2 plus 2 plus 1 is 5 moles per litre. We have a 10 mil, sorry, a 10 litre flask, so that means 5 moles per litre gives us 50 gaseous moles. The final part of the calculation is just one mark. Okay, the second part is asking us about looking at the temperature dependence of our equilibrium constant. So here we see that as we increase temperature, our equilibrium constant is increasing. That means as we increase temperature, we are forming more products. Okay, equilibrium constant is the ratio of products to reactants. So the higher the equilibrium constant, the more products are, are present. So we see in this reaction that an increase in temperature results in an increase in product concentration. In other words, the equilibrium is shifting to the right. Le Chatelier says that e equilibrium will shift to oppose the change that we impose on it. So the, our equilibrium is shifting to form products to offset the increase in temperature that we're applying. That must mean that the forward reaction is endothermic. It's mopping up some of this heat that we've been applying through increasing the temperature. So if we have an equilibrium and the forward reaction um, uh, is promoted by increasing temperature, that must mean that it's an endothermic reaction. When we look at our reaction, we see that there are more gas moles on the product side. So therefore, if we have increased temperature and produce more products, that means we're producing more gas moles. So therefore, the pressure will also increase.